And welcome back, Gamer Nation. SKS here with another episode. I think we're on episode 14 of Law and Order. <laughs> Law and Order, not Law and Order. I just had an enlightening conversation with the sheriff of Ah, oh, it's Kansas. He told me about the drug bust that killed Aaron's dad. Apparently, they found three pounds of meth. Oh my God, That's three pounds! Wonder if it's in the Bowers case file. Three you pounds. Really think mom's the killer? Three pounds. Wrong, but, uh, yeah, I do. You better hope your hunch is right. Montrose has himself a big megaphone, and he's been making a lot of noise about how you roughed up his client. Roughed up. What's your plan? Subpoena the boy's files? Maybe. But first, I think we need to pay Mrs. Bauer a visit. Can we get a search warrant, just in case? The press is still giving us grief over the way we fumbled the preppy jogger case. Preppy jogger? They're gonna crucify us if you break into this apartment and come up empty. I hope you know what you're doing. What? Who are you even supposed to be, woman? Let's see how nice these apartments are. Ooh. <laughs> NYPD, open up. Ooh. Mrs. Bauer, if you don't let us in, we're gonna have to force the door. Oh, oh this place man. is nice. What a wreck. If we're lucky she won't come back and make a scene. She's probably passed out on the floor. That. Oh. Oh, hell. Dead? Very. Oh. I'll call dispatch. Yeah, yeah, this is Briscoe. We're on the scene at the Bauer residence, and we're going to need an ME. Uh, looks like a 10109. Yeah, right. The lights don't work. No heat either. I'm guessing the electricity's been cut off. Well, she's just real nice. Wasn't Good Shepherd supposed to take care of this kind of thing? We've got two victims now. Let's get a better picture of how they died and how they live. <laughs> what? Well, she's been doing meth. I can see the pipe down there. It's not like we didn't know this was going to happen, did we, gamers? This episode has taken a big turn from the other ones. I uh, I will say, I mean, it's less court and more uh, we're digging around to see what's happening. Let's see what we got to find here. Uh, the pipe. Uh, evidence of drug use. Jenna's cause of death. Source of income. Aaron's cause of death. Okay, well, we have this. Meth pipe. Looks like Mom had a bad habit. Guess we know who Aaron was bringing the candy for. And knowing meth addicts, I can imagine she wasn't too compassionate when he came home without it. Hmm. Oh, we got pills here. Vodka bottle's empty. And so's a bottle of Xanax. I think we found our cause of death. You think people would realize that you don't mix that shit? I never understood that. See Christmas tree. Isn't it like that past New Year's? Let me get under here. Okay, this is zoomed in over here. This is what's that? Somebody paid Jenna Bauer a thousand bucks back in April. New directions holding. Code. Why didn't she pay for her power? I have a feeling thousand dollar checks didn't show up in her mailbox all that often. I wonder how she scored this one. Oh, I just saw something. Check this out. I wonder how this fell over. Mrs. Talis's Statue of Liberty clock. Look at the head of it. Ooh. Ooh. Damn it, Lenny. Look. Right there. Blood. I can guess whose. The poor kid comes home with this crap, and she beats him with it. Did she drag him back out there? Satisfied? Yeah. I think our killer's gonna miss her date in court. You think she overdosed on purpose? Out of guilt? Maybe. She's a junkie, Ray. Don't hurt yourself trying to figure or it out. Or maybe the black guy killed her. Well, what do you know? Looky here, looky and here. Uh-uh. It's the caseworker from Good Shepherd. And she's knocking on the wrong door. Oh, hey, miss! Uh, the party's down here! Detective Briscoe? What are you doing? Oh my god! Is Mrs. Bauer... I'm afraid so. Tell me. Did the place look like this on Christmas Day? Well, how should I know? Uh -oh. Isn't that the date of your last visit? My last visit? I, I wasn't here on Christmas. Oh. I'd better call the office about this. Oh. Dr. Montrose? Y yeah, I'm, I'm at the apartment. There's, there's something you should know. Oh, we've caught him. <laughs> we've caught him. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting way too excited about this. 
Ah. Oh. <laughs> I am wringing my hands together. This is... This is... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Shut up, phone. Why is my phone doing this? I wasn't even touching you. It just started lighting up and saying words. <sighs> okay. Let's see. I'm ready to bring down the house. <laughs> Adam Schiff. The Bauer case. Isn't it time we close the file on that one? No. Uh, I'd love to, believe me, but justice hasn't been done. Poetic justice, maybe. Nobody comes away from this one looking good. Including us. What Detective Curtis is saying is, we think you've got a case against the good shepherd. Yeah. Case. Against Stefan Montrose, you mean? The champion of the downtrodden? Oh, this guy. Are you saying he's the killer? No, but his agency failed to prevent the deaths. We feel he's responsible. Yeah, and he's oh, a dick. Great. Go ahead. I'm listening. Tell me why we should go after Montrose. Uh, Montrose stonewalled us. He put Aaron in danger. He failed to monitor the situation. No. Oh, there we go. I almost Law says the child welfare agency's got to check in with clients regularly. And Good Shepherd didn't? No. Do you have reason to believe Good Shepherd failed to supervise the Bowers? Yes. They've been fudging the books. Cook the books. Montrose claimed the caseworker made a Christmas visit, but she seemed to have no memory of it. Montrose had no idea where the Bowers lived. Mr. Bowers remarked she hadn't met the... Why didn't they interview her there? I mean, she did walk in on a murder scene. Apparently not. She drew a blank when we asked about her last visit. And Montrose himself basically admitted that he ignores state procedure. Are we going to stand by and let our social service agencies go rogue? Uh-oh. Jack, we don't have a case against him. Not yet. Let's see what's in those case files. Dun-dun. He's probably got rid of all the case files. That was the... shortest thing ever. How was that even something? Here's the last record in the file. What about the sensitive material from several years ago Montrose told us about? Mysteriously missing. Oh. Christmas Day, huh? That is one dedicated caseworker. Could the caseworker have visited Jenna and Aaron Bauer at their apartment on Christmas afternoon? No. Gina was still asleep. No, Aaron was atop the World Trade Center. Oh, yeah, they did say that, didn't they? Aaron was already dead at the time. The Bowers spent Christmas in Russell County, Kansas. <laughs> oh, if you're from Kansas, evidently you all have a meth problem. That's one lying caseworker. We got a ticket says Aaron Bauer was at the top of the World Trade Center at 2 that afternoon. Uh -oh. This report's a complete fabrication, no question. But who do we indict? Simplest thing would be to go after the caseworker. But she but works for the guy. Montrose says he prefers to be the point of contact with the city. Then let's give him what he wants. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to bring this guy down so bad. I'm coming after you. <laughs> uh -oh. Throughout his career, Stefan Montrose has continually shown a light on the system's indifference to its most vulnerable citizens. Oh, God. Tuesday afternoon, the system struck back. We know what the columns are saying, Miss Jameson. We intend to prove that Dr. Montrose is guilty as charged. Manslaughter with gross negligence? Oh, shit. In addition to one count of falsification of records with intent to deceive. I'm afraid you won't get the chance to present those records in court. I'm filing a motion to suppress. What? What? Paperwork went through the day before the subpoena was served. Good Shepherd is no longer run by the Archdiocese of New York. It's now an entirely private agency, administered through Dr. Montrose's holding company, New Directions. So you propose to throw out the evidence because we put the wrong address on the subpoena? Of all the underhanded ploys. Oh, wow. The argument is technically correct. Improper service of a subpoena invalidates admissibility. The court finds for the motion. Fine. We'll proceed without it. Oh, what the... <sighs> oh, my God. Dr. Montrose, we've heard in graphic detail about the final days of Aaron Bauer. It's natural to feel pity and perhaps even outrage over the manner in which he died. 
So tell the court, are you in fact guilty of gross negligence? No, I am not. Let me read you a quote. Neglect is built into our current welfare system. The client is a mere asset to be kept or traded as it benefits the agency. Oh ah, God. you're reading to me from my own book, The Empty High Chair, published last spring. My agency is different. Indeed. Good Shepherd is distinguished for treating its clients with dignity. Oh as my individuals God. with needs. Isn't that right? That she's leading. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, we can Objection. do that. Yeah, point the finger. Leading. Defense is giving a speech for her client. Sustained. Uh, let's concentrate on the facts of this case, shall we? Are you personally involved in the case of Aaron Bauer? I involved myself personally in every one of my cases. And this was especially true with respect to Aaron. How so? When the Bowers first came to my attention, Aaron had been taken into state custody and shut away inside City Youth Home. I know that institution well. Oh my Spent god. my own formative years there. Nobody deserves to go to City Youth Home. Nobody. 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 And yet, despite your personal involvement in this case, Aaron Bauer was killed. How do you explain this? One word. Drugs. First it was the crack epidemic. Now, <laughs> just as that's beginning to subside, an even worse plague is sweeping through New York. It's a plague that destroys mostly those on the margins. So it's easy for the rest of us to ignore. Do you have some ideas for addressing Wait, this you problem? can't just... What? Yes, that's... Who cares? Objection. Uh, immaterial, misleading, assuming facts, withdrawal... No, immaterial. This has nothing to do with immaterial. it. Immaterial. The defendant is changing the subject. Sustained. Please strike that last statement from the testimony. New York City is not on trial here. Jenna Bauer lapsed back into addiction, unbeknownst to you, although your caseworker visited her as recently as Christmas Day. Oh. I'm afraid that's correct. In spite of our vigilance, in spite of intensive therapy, the siren call of crystal meth proved... The siren easy. call. And once she began using again, she quickly became a danger to her son. How did she manage to pull the wool over your eyes? It's one of the most insidious aspects of the syndrome. Oh, good I've lord. seen it many times. That judge has the big ears. Puts up a false front of normalcy. That jury guy's the got a big ear. can fool even a trained observer. Uh, trained observer, no. One last question. Has this tragedy caused you to re-examine your practice? Naturally. We're thoroughly reviewing our procedures. We exist to serve our clients. The death of one impoverishes us all. Of course. Impoverishes you, us? Dr. Montrose. Your witness, Mr. McCoy. Impoverishes us? <laughs> what? <laughs> is that even... Is it words? <clears throat> well, let's see. We better ask good questions. I want to destroy this Dr. guy. Dr. Montrose. Dr. Montrose. Montrose used visitation, book, and danger. Your agency advocated for Jenna Bauer in her bid to regain custody of her son, Aaron. In retrospect, was this in Aaron's best interest? Considering his fate, the answer has to be no. But hindsight is always 2020. Oh. At the time, you believed the opposite to be self-evident, right? Every mother deserves to retain the custody of her children? We weighed the pros and cons of Jenna Bauer's case, and we came to the conclusion that she deserved a second chance. Perhaps if we'd had more facts at our disposal, we would have agreed with the city's decision. I don't believe that. Is this testimony? No, he said nobody wants to go there. Montrose claimed earlier they fought against giving her. Montrose really made it, took up the petition. The alternative for the city was youth home. And Montrose said that nobody deserved to go there. Nobody. Montrose said the Bowers were clients. Boom. In this him. case, the alternative was placing Aaron in City Youth Home. You simply didn't want him there. Dr. Montrose, have you ever signed off on moving a child from his parents' custody into the institutional foster care system? Uh oh No. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, that, that's what I'm talking about. State guidelines for social welfare agencies mandate one home visit per month at the very least. You need to lecture I'm well acquainted with well state acquainted. guidelines. Well acquainted. Do you follow them? Yes, Mr. McCoy. We follow the state guidelines meticulously. Good Shepherd didn't have its own guidelines? No. 
Uh oh. He told us he did. Do you believe him? No. He said they did what they want. The rogue agency. 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 Montrose said the again lines don't apply. I, he didn't testify, I don't think, did he? Caseworker admitted the good shit that makes up the rules. Montrose told the detectives. Memo about revised gun. There we go. He told them. Yeah. Didn't you tell the detectives that Good Shepherd makes its own guidelines? I don't recall saying anything of the sort. Think back, Dr. Montrose. It was during the same interview in which you refused to turn over Aaron Bauer's case files. In clear violation of standard procedure... Objection. Immaterial. No. It goes to credibility, Your Honor. Overruled. I won't deny that our agency operates according to unique procedures. Unique? But if anything, our guidelines are more comprehensive than the state's. Oh, bull. Bull. Book. Nobody cares about his book. Nobody cares about his youth. Uh, the visitation report, maybe. Oh, we're not allowed to use that. You've heard Detective Curtis's account of what he found in Jenna Bauer's apartment. Did we? You've seen the pictures. Indeed, I have. What can I say? Appalling. I had no idea until this very morning when my counsel showed me the pictures. Oh, bull. Bull, is it plausible that Dr. Montrose had no idea the state of the Bauer apartment before now? No. No, he knew. They go once a month. Caseworker called Montrose. Oh, well, yeah, there. Montrose really testified. Yeah, she called. We know your caseworker, Ms. Schuyler, briefed you after Mrs. Bauer's body was discovered. Well, yes, of, of course. Uh-oh, he's freaking out. It takes a picture to really communicate the situation. Oh. You're the expert, Dr. Montrose. Do you think it's possible for conditions to degenerate that rapidly in a mere eight days? It's possible, I suppose. But I have to admit, if I were an outside observer... I'd find it a difficult story to swallow. Uh -oh. Why would he say that? If it weren't for my faith in my employer, Miss Skyler, I'd be inclined to think it was a story. Really? Hmm. No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> we didn't destroy him as much as I wanted to. I wanted it to be like plus 158, you know, by the end of that one. Ugh. We started out with three pounds of meth, and we went to that. I don't even know right now, gamers. Oh. <laughs> okay, I ate a lot of chocolate earlier, so I'm super hyper. It's midnight. I'm going to be recording for a while. I'll see you next episode, gamers. Good night.